So I made the cabbage salad weighing my ingredients. Then I imagined what two of my favorite YouTubers, Adam Ragusia and Josh Weissman, would say about this exercise. Adam's channel is sort of a support group for home cooks. The main message is, you are okay just the way you are. Josh's channel is a boot camp for home cooks. Josh wants you to stop being pathetic in the kitchen and make something of yourself, damn it. <laughs> what can I say? I love them both. I have this fantasy where Adam and Josh have a food fight. It would be a macaron duel. So epic. Lynn manuel Miranda would have to write a musical about it. So about weighing your ingredients. To Adam. This scale symbolizes the ultimate oppression inflicted on the home cooks by the totalitarian perfectionist high cuisine Nazis. It's none of their business how Adam cuts his carrots and how much salt he puts in his salad. To Josh, a scale is a symbol of liberation from inconsistency and mediocrity. So where does that leave me? Do I run a support group or a boot camp? After some reflection, I think my channel is a supportive boot camp. If you want your food to taste better, I want to help you get there as quickly and easily as possible. Not all of you have time to find your way through many, many mistakes. Some of you have limited time to spend in the kitchen and you need results fast. For the longest time, I've adopted Chef John's philosophy when it comes to seasoning. If it doesn't taste good, whose fault is that, huh? <laughs> to some degree, he's right. John and I can show up to your house and season your food for you. But once in a while, I think we should give you an example of what we think is seasoned. It's very difficult to do that in a cooked dish because when food is cooked, it shrinks. So how much salt you'll need will depend on how much you shrink it. But in a salad, it's actually doable, so why not give an accurate recipe? You know, at least once in a while. In case you want to ask for volume measurements, the answer is no, just no. Either don't measure at all or measure in a meaningful way. What on earth is a cup of cabbage? It depends on how much you pack it down. It's also completely unnecessary to dirty a bunch of measuring cups and spoons when you could just put the bowl on a scale and dump everything in. <laughs> Let's start with the cabbage. We'll only need about half of it. Remove and discard the outer leaves in case they're dirty. Don't wash the cabbage to avoid water getting trapped between the leaves. But if you see anything suspicious, take a damp paper towel and wipe it up. Trim any blemishes. Cut off a couple of big chunks and shred them on a mandolin or using a knife. By the way, I just got myself a new mandolin. My Benriner slicer was getting dull after years of use and I bought myself this cheapy little OXO thingy recommended by Daniel Gritzer from SeriousSeats.com. It's not continuously adjustable like Benriner, but three settings that it offers are plenty for me. What I love about it is that it's small, easy to store and easy to wash. At $15, it's a third of the price of Benriner, so what's not to love? The guard is as useless as the one Benriner gives you, so buy cut-resistant gloves. Mandolins are extremely dangerous. Please use them responsibly. The links for the mandolin and gloves are below. We'll need 450 grams of cabbage. You can certainly do that with a food processor, but I prefer my cabbage sliced thicker than my processor disc lets me. On this slicer, I'm on the thickest setting. When I get close to the end, I do it with a knife. Here is what 450 grams roughly looks like. My goal with a carrot is to give it roughly the same shape as the cabbage. The easiest thing to do is to grate it using a food processor, but since I already have my mandolin out, I'll just slice it thinly and then cut it into ribbons. We need 100 grams of carrot. Here is what that looks like. It's one large carrot. Now on to the green stuff. We'll need 30 grams of chopped herbs. Good options here are dill, parsley, and cilantro. Today I have a mix of dill and cilantro. Cilantro stems are pretty soft, but dill stems are a bit harder, so I'll pull them out. Mince it all up and add to your salad. 
Let's add 15 grams of chopped scallions. White parts, green parts, everything. That's about three small scallions. And that's it. Let's dress it. 20 grams lime and lemon juice. Yes, it has to be freshly squeezed. You're welcome to use more lemon juice or more lime juice as long as you have a total of 20 grams. 7 grams of salt. Because we are measuring it by weight, the salt type doesn't matter, but I'm using them in crystal kosher. 20 grams of extra virgin olive oil. I started mixing everything and then remembered that I forgot the sugar. We need 5 grams of granulated sugar. Now give it all a really good toss. Be thorough so that you don't have one bite that's too salty and one bite that's too bland. There are two textural options with the salad. The first one is crispy crunchy. It's my favorite to get this texture, serve the salad immediately after dressing. The second option is to give the salad a slightly more tender texture. You can achieve it by letting the salad sit in the fridge for at least an hour. You can keep it as long as 24 hours, but it will get progressively softer and in my opinion, less tasty. Just to clarify, when I make salads for myself, I don't measure anything. After you make the salad once by weight, you should probably give it a shot the intuitive way. The point of weighing the first time is to learn what my salad tastes like. Once you know that, you can taste and adjust for future salads. Here are more thought-provoking culinary videos for you to check out. And if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.